Welcome again. So glad you're here. Today, I wanted to work on some core training. And this is not going to be, I'm going to get the ripped six pack abs workout. This is core training specifically to help start improving your balance. So it's going to seem pretty simple. It's not going to be crazy, ab burning. You might be sore tomorrow. I hope you are, because that means you've started building some muscle. But if you're not sore, that's okay too. <laughs> we're going to work on core. And then we're going to do a few balance training exercises as well. I want you to see how strengthening your core actually improves your balance. Now, there's a little bit of a caveat here. Balance also comes from limber muscles and strong muscles. So just strengthening your core is not going to be that one time I'm going to fix my balance forever. It's a holistic thing with your body, but having a strong core helps a lot with your balance. And this is, I've seen it with all of my clients when we do balance training exercise or core training exercises, their balance improves. So first off though, I want you to see, I want to try. Okay. This is a little test for you for this, this workout. What we're going to start with is just a simple balance test to begin with and to see how good your balance is and see if it improves after we activate your core. All right. So what we're going to start with is standing knee slightly bent. I want you to pull in your belly button, keep those shoulders nice and tall. And now you're just going to hold. Okay. So let's see how long you can hold it. I'm going to cut you off like 10 seconds so that we're not spending all day just standing on one leg. All right. So let's do another five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're going to switch to that second leg. See if it's just the same because you might notice that one leg has more balance than the other. Standing knee slightly bent, shoulders nice and tall. Good. So now what I want you to pay attention to while you're doing this, do you feel tightness in your calf or is your calf like, whoa, what's going on? Foam rolling will help with that. And there's going to be a foam rolling video that you can find. And there's four, three, two, one. Could also be glute strength. It could be quad strength. Maybe you felt your inner thighs, tons of inner thighs. I don't know. So that's one test. Now, if you're like, that was a piece of cake, give me something harder. Okay, no problem. So what I want you to do, go back to that first leg, standing knees slightly bent, shoulders nice and tall, close your eyes. Way harder, right? <laughs> I feel my leg doing all, what, what, what? It's doing so much more stabilizing right now. Here's five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, let's go to that second leg. If that was still easy, I have one more for you. It'll probably still, still be too easy for you, but maybe not. Standing knees slightly bent, shoulders nice and tall. Here we go. Close those eyes. Wow, this I, I feel this side a lot a lot more challenging. <laughs> maybe you do too. All right, here's six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so now you're probably feeling your calf working a lot, or maybe your your legs are getting tired, your quads. One more, we're gonna do, go back to that first leg, standing knee slightly bent, shoulders nice and tall, abs engaged, and your front, back, side, without putting your, your foot down. This is just to check balance with movement, okay? Let's do, let's do one more. I think that'll make four. Okay, good. Now let's go to that second leg, standing knee slightly bent, Shoulders nice and tall, abs engaged. Here we go. Here's back or forward, back, side. Good. So there's so many muscles working right now. It's your glutes, your calves, your quads, your hamstrings, your inner thighs, all of that in your core. So we're not going to attack all of those lower leg muscles today, but we are going to work on your core. Okay? So let's go to the floor. Now... What I want you to do, now if you have had um, like back surgery or you can't get on the floor because of knee surgery, do these in your bed or do them on the couch. You don't have to get on the floor, all right? You can do them wherever there's a flat surface. So don't worry about that. We're gonna roll down. First off, the very most important thing. So I want you to, um, your feet are shoulder width apart. You're just relaxed. The most important part of your core 
is the deep intrinsic stabilizers. And well, not in most important, all of your core is important. I shouldn't say that, but we, it's hard to activate those deep intrinsic stabilizers that are like behind your six pack, okay? So we're gonna try to, to get those to work today. What you're gonna do is a little pelvic tilt. So I want you not using your quads, not using your glutes, not pushing through your feet, but just using your abs to, to tilt your pelvis so that your lower back is completely flat on the floor, your tailbone is off the floor, and your, leg, your legs are relaxed. So it's your abs that are doing that tilt right now. Okay, so you should feel some lower abs engaging. You should feel like maybe maybe even some, a little bit of like back muscles working to try. There should be zero, like you can't even fit a quarter between your lower back and the floor. There, you should, that should be completely flat. And we're just gonna hang out here. Now, if you start feeling your quads working, because when your abs get tired, all these other muscles want us to start helping you. So if you feel quads or you feel glutes or you feel your feet trying to push that lower back in the floor, take a break, relax, and then go back into it. So that little pelvic tilt. Now, here's the other thing to make those abs really work hard. Pretend someone's gonna tickle you and you are trying so hard for them to just feel rock hard abs when they tickle you. They don't feel any flab whatsoever. You're like, no, nope, I'm not ticklish, <laughs> right? So that, that should make you super you're tired in your core, you're like you should feel your core, a lot of it, like your whole trunk working. And let's take a little break. Hoo wee, so we're gonna do that three more times. We're gonna do that pelvic tilt. No quarter between your lower back and the floor. Pretend someone's tickling you and try to even lift that tailbone off the floor if you can too. So you're really doing a good pelvic tilt here. Good. Let's hold for another five, four, Three, two, and take a little break. We're gonna do that two more times. Hopefully you're starting to feel your core, your, your core engaging. That's my hope. So here we go. Pelvic tilt, no quarter, tailbone off the floor, pretend you're being tickled. Good, and you're just gonna hold there. So if you can breathe, that's even better. <laughs> Cause I don't want anybody passing out. At least you're on the floor. <laughs> Here's five, four, three, two, and done. Good. A little release. Woo hoo. It's so good, right? Okay. Now we're going to do that one more time. Pelvic tilt. Belly button into that spine. Pretend someone's tickling you. Lift that tailbone off the floor. We're just going to hold there. Doing so good. And then we are going to five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. Now, knees over hips, knees over hips, tailbone off the floor. If this is really hard to do to keep that tailbone off the floor, come back to here, continue with that pelvic tilt and the tickle, okay? Here, you're still doing the pelvic tilt, the tailbone is off the floor, you're being tickled, but it's more challenging for your core. The, when you start feeling your quads working, stop take a break, shake it out, let it relax, and then go back into it, all right? So we're gonna hold here for 30 seconds. Good job. Should, oh, knees. So if the farther your knees are away from your center line of your body, the harder it is, and the more tendency your lower back has to come off the floor. It's more important to keep the lower back on the floor than it is to take those knees away from the center line of your body. So we're gonna, we have three, two, and one. Okay, go ahead and relax. So if this, this pelvic tilt on the floor is too easy for you, and this was a good challenge, stay here. If you want to add more challenge than what we're gonna do, belly button to that spine, pretend someone's tickling you, we're gonna to go to a dead bug. So hands over chest. We're gonna take right arm overhead and extend left leg. Come back to center. And we're gonna switch. Left arm overhead, right leg extended, and switch. 
The slower you go, the harder it is. This is not a race. This is all about core stability. So if you're starting to feel your quads, drop those legs, take a little break, and come back to it. Because your, your abs stopped working. So that's why you don't want your quads to do the work for you. Your abs stopped. This is the goal is abs today, not quads today, okay? Good. So now, the other thing is, how's that lower back? Because it should still be on the floor. You don't want that lower back coming off the floor or else that's another, you'll start getting feeling some like lower back fatigue and your abs aren't, aren't working as effectively as they should be. Okay, so let's go, let's go two more each leg. Good, and hopefully you're starting to feel your core get a little tired. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, good. We'll do one more. Awesome. Little break. Whoo-wee. That's so good. Now, if you've had, uh, well, we're going to flip over and work more. First off, do you need a lower back? Um, Lower back stretch, a little knee hug here, maybe. All right, we're going to roll into your stomach. And maybe you, need to, maybe you need to stretch out your abs a little bit. If you just plant your hands or, and drive those elbows into the floor, push your hands into the floor as you lift your abs, you're going to get a really nice stretch through your core if, if it got fatigued. Hopefully you don't feel any lower back stuff here. Hopefully you just feel it feels good through your core. Okay, good. So if it hurts you lower back to lay on the floor or you've had like a heart transplant or maybe lungs or something where your diaphragm has been messed with or you're missing your pericardium, then you can do these on a stability ball. I'm not going to do that today for you. So if you want to skip through this part, you can. But for everybody else, we're going to do some swimmers. So I want you, your head, I want you to focus on pushing the back of your head towards the ceiling. Squeeze your glutes. So you're going to do a little pelvic tilt here. Abs engaged like you're being tickled again. And now you're going to lift the back of your hand toward the ceiling, your right arm and your left leg. Come back to center. And then switch arms and legs. So we're just, these are called swimmers. So we're just going to alternate. Raising, and this is going to help strengthen through that lower back, like a lot. Now what I want, want you to be aware of while you're doing these is please keep your eyes looking at your mat. I don't want you looking at the wall in front of you. What we're trying to do is keep a nice straight line from your head all the way through your tailbone, like a steel rod there. So... You want a nice straight line, keeping that spine in proper alignment. Good. Now, if you're starting to get some neck fatigue, then go ahead and drop your, your forehead to the floor, and we'll keep going. But if you can keep that back of your head pushed towards the ceiling, then that'll help counteract some of the, the poor posture that we have with our our uh, lifestyles of phones and driving and computers. Okay, we're gonna do one more, each arm and leg. Good and good. Okay, now let's stretch that out. So we're gonna go into a child's pose, just setting those hips on the heels and then reach forward, dropping your head to the floor. Good, we're gonna come onto your hands and knees. We're gonna do a quick cat cow. So cat shrug those shoulders, really trying to drive the floor apart with your hands. Shrug those shoulders to the ceiling. And now we're gonna go into a cow. So we're looking up, letting those the the hips extend back. Round one more time, round that upper back. And then we're gonna go into a cow. Oh, that's so nice. Okay. One more, going back down to the floor. These are called supermans. 
and same position with your head, the back of your head driving into the ceiling above you. This is going to be double arm, double leg. Now, if this is very challenging, it hurts your lower back, you don't have the strength, it's okay. What I want you to either do is just focus on lifting your arms only, getting those biceps right by your ears, or you can just focus on lifting your legs only. Or if you want to do double, you can. All right, so we're going to shoot for 20 reps here. All right, we're going to go nice and slow and controlled. We're not rushing through these. It isn't a race. We're trying to build core strength, improve our balance. Good. Four, five, six. Trying to get those arms, those biceps by your ears. And if this is a big challenge for you, you're not alone. There's a lot of people who struggle with this. And we're halfway done. 10, 9, 8. In su subsequent workouts, we're going to be working on trying to build the strength through your back so that it's easier to get those biceps by your ears. So I think that's 3, 2, and 1. Good. Woo -wee. Okay, child's pose again. <sighs> Now, if that was really challenging, and even if doing 20 was a lot, um, that's okay. Work up to it. Do as many as you can. Take a little break and work up to it. Now, we're going to do one more. So, if you've had a knee replacement or a hip replacement, or actually just knee, and it hurts to kneel on your knee, which I totally understand. It feels kind of weird. And even on your bed, and the softness of your bed doesn't help, then... We'll, we'll be doing a different glute workout for you. But right now, uh, you can skip through this. Or if you want um, to try, feel free. So pelvic tilt. So push push those hips down. Or hands directly underneath shoulder, knees under hips, back of head towards the ceiling. And now what we're going to do is extend your right arm and left leg. Belly button to that spine. So we don't want a lot of hip twisting. We don't want a hip raise. We want those hips to be nice and square and your bicep right by your ear. We're just going to hold here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and done. Good. Switch in sides. Pelvic tilt. Belly button to that spine. Extend arm and opposite leg. Bicep right by ear, and here's 10, 9, back of the head toward the ceiling, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and done. Okay, so that's called a bird dog. We're going to do it again. You're going to see an improvement in your balance, I promise. All right, so one more time. Hands and knees, pelvic tilt, starting with that first side, foot, foot flexed. Belly button to spine. Make sure those hips are square. So much to remember, huh? <laughs> For good, good form here. Here's six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. We're gonna switch. So now we're gonna we can we can add some challenge to this if you want. We'll do that in a different video though. I just want to get you guys started on some basics right now. Here's four. Three, two, and one. Good. Okay, child's pose again if you need. Shift those hips side to side a little bit. That might help if you're feeling anything weird in that lower back. Good. Awesome. Here's four, three, two, and one. Okay. So, how are we doing? We're doing good. What I want you to do is just come to a standing position. We'll slowly stand it up. This is just a quick little 15 minute video here not too hard you could do this every day if you wanted to let's check your check your balance again going back to that first leg we start on standing knees slightly bent shoulders tall and do you see an improvement i want to know put it in the comments or go over to the facebook group and say hey that was amazing i could stand forever when i couldn't the first part of the video 
Let's switch feet, switch legs, standing knees slightly bent, shoulders tall, belly button to that spine. Good. <sighs> Amazing, huh? Huh? Hopefully. And if you do this more consistently, your balance is gonna improve. And there's a lot more we can do with balance, but this was just to get you started. Okay, so now let's go back to that first leg, standing knees slightly bent, shoulders, shoulders tall, and now we're gonna close your eyes. Maybe your abs are too tired, but I really focus on pulling your belly button into your spine. Here's four, three, two, and one. Hopefully that was easier, huh? We're gonna go back to, the, or go to that second leg. Knees slightly bent, shoulders tall, abs engaged. Here we go. Oh boy. Four, three, two, and one. All right. Now, first leg again, we're gonna do that movement. So, shoulders tall, standing knees slightly bent. We're gonna go forward, back, side, forward, back, side, belly button to that spine. Hopefully we engaged your core enough that you're noticing it's much easier. Good. Switching to that second leg. Here we go. Standing knee slightly bent. Forward, back, side, forward, back. Good. And we're not trying to really hyperextend. You're just you're just taking that leg to the back. You're not trying to reach way far back. I think one more, right? To make four, hopefully. Okay. Huh, that was nice, right? <laughs> Let's do a deep breath in. It's always good to finish a workout that way. Excellent, one more. And you're done. Good job. I'll see you on the next video. And please, if there's one that you were like, oh, that was hard, I need modifications, or if there's something else you wanna see, go ahead, go over to the Facebook group, put it in the comments here. Recover Strong with Fitness and Facebook. Or you can also, um, yeah, put it in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you have friends that you want to do this with so you're in misery together, I mean, no, not misery. <laughs> Getting stronger together, that's what it is. Invite them, let them know. Do a workout together. This community is always better. So have a great day.